So the type of joint you may wish to make is one where you've got a side piece and then a shelf and you'd like to just domino that shelf right into the piece and have it line up with a line that you've scored on there. Now when you mark a line on a board like this you don't have any reference surfaces to go off. You don't have a place to put the fence on here or anything like that so you've got to use a different technique and it turns out it's very easy to do. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do it. One way places the shelf so that the top of the shelf is lined up with the line. This is a technique that if you're using three quarter inch sheet good stock is possible with the DF500, the original domino. The second technique is actually one that you can use with both units. What it'll do is it'll center the shelf onto this line. So this line will go right through the thickness of this shelf. Now the reason why the 500 is able to do this three quarter inch stock is you know, due to the technique, it relies on the distance between the bottom of the unit and the center of the mortise. Now on the 500, that's 10 millimeters, so that'll work on three quarter inch stock, you know, nominal 18 millimeter thick stock. The DF700, on the other hand, the distance from the bottom to the center of the mortise is 15 millimeters. So when I show you the technique, you'll see that this one here would not be able to do it simply because it would put the mortise basically above the board. It would not put it in the middle. But the second technique where you center it is valid for both. So if you have a 700 and you don't have a 500, it'll work very well for you even though you're using some of the smaller dominoes. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Now the first technique I'm going to show you is the one that's better suited to the Domino DF500, the original Domino. And what this one here does is we're going to take this shelf and we're basically going to place it so that the top of it lines up with the line. So the technique, really simple to do. Just line it up with the line so the top of the shelf, you know, exactly the orientation that you'd want to assemble it. Just take it and then fold it up. And then put the whole thing down. Of course, you can line it back up again to get it really nice and labeled. And I'll get this kind of close because I'm going to want to clamp this for doing our demonstration. Now we're going to mark the lines where the domino is going to go. You're only going to mark them on this top surface. So just go ahead and we'll put like a domino here and a domino here. I'm going to be using 840s for this. You don't need to put any marks down here because what we're going to do is we're going to clamp this in place and it's going to act as a registration for holes in this board as well as the base. So the way that this is going to go. Let me clamp this in place so it doesn't scoot around too much. The way this works is that we're relying on the distance from the bottom to the center of this mortise being 10 millimeters. So that's going to place this domino 10 millimeters up centered on this stock when we set it down like this. Now with an 8 millimeter bit in there that means that the top of the, the top part of the mortise that we're going to see here is going to be at 10 plus 4 millimeters. So 14 millimeters up, 18 millimeter stock, we'll still have 4 millimeters above it. Now this actually works out alright that the domino is going to tend to be off-center regardless of the size that you use uh, on three-quarter stock since this is coming up 10 and this is not only 18 thick. And the reason for that is that it's moving it more towards the surface that's the bottom of the shelf. So in a way there's going to be more meat above the domino, which is exactly what you would want on a shelf. So this works out just perfectly. So the first set of mortises that we're going to make, we're going to place this domino flat on here and we're going to line it up with the line. We're going to line up this little triangle that's on here on the front of your fence with the line that's there. And then we're going to plow the mortise straight in. So again, keep this thing flat on the surface. Then for the second set, we flip this up. We use this hairline that's on the back here to line it up with the line. And we plunge straight down into the stock. Then the two of those are going to be lined up. Now personally, when I do this, a lot of times I'll do is I'll set this fence up at the 22 quick set mark so that I can tip this down. The reason being is... You can see this domino is flat on this table and I can scoot it around, it's not touching the fence. So I'm not tilting this up. I'm still getting good registration, but I can use these cursor hairs to make it a little easier to register where the line is for the, for the mortise. All right, well, let's uh, plow these holes. this does not work with the Domino DF700 is simply because the distance from the bottom to the center of the mortise is not 10 millimeters, it's 15. So pretty much you're already sitting at the very top of this. Almost anything you're going to plow in there is going to break through the surface. So this technique does not work with the DF700 unless your stock is at least an inch thick. However, we can go a different route and this method is actually going to work with the 700 or the 500. 
but we'll show it to you on the 700. So I've labeled the top of my shelf this other side that we're going to mortise into centered because we're going to be centering this onto the stock. Now in this case here, the lines are done a little bit differently. You can either tip it down or to the other way. Either way, you're just going to mark some lines. Now in my case, I'm going to mark it on the surface that's the top. So we're going to do the opposite of what we did previously. I'm just going to pick two arbitrary places for these dominoes. The reason for that is with the 700, and you're going to see why with the procedure, if I mark it from the top, it'll tend to be that the domino is closer to the bottom. Again, something that we kind of want. With the 500, you're more able to get to dead center of this stock. So you could pick either side that's more convenient for you. Now in the case of this technique though, you're going to want to place this approximately centered on this stock and then transfer these marks down to the main material, to the side stock. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plow the mortises in here just a normal way, tip down the fence and mark it. I'm going to set it so it's 10 millimeters down from the top surface. Okay, it's going to happen to match what this one here is on this side. And we'll plow the mortises. Then I'm going to show you how we plow these and center it on the line. Now I want to center the mortises on this line. If you look on the side of the fences here, you're going to see a little mark here. It's on both sides. This is the center of the mortise. This mark also exists on the DF500. Now on the 500, uh, I have the older pin style fence on right now. It's the top of this edge here. There's a little ledge on the side that you can see. That's the 10 millimeter mark. That's the center of the mortise. It also happens on the pin fence that it's where this triangle edge by the pin is. So you have those two areas to line up with. If you have the paddle fence, the more common current one, it's the top of this edge here. So very same edge. So just always plan on using this edge and it'll work if you're using the paddle or pin fence. So now with the 700, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it here. I have those little pencil marks that I transferred onto this surface. What I'm going to want to do is I can place the domino like this so I can see the center line, but I can also see these lines to line them up with the center mark. So this way here, I have this forming a cross, and I'm going to put it right where the middle of that mortise should go. There we go. Right there would be where that mortise is and the other one. It takes a little bit longer to line up than this other method, but it works. And this will work in a variety of other situations where this other technique would not work. And there you go. It's centered. Now in my case when I did this, I unfortunately got my uh, other mortise too close to the edge, so I had to kind of eyeball it off the edge. That was my own mistake, so just don't do that. This could almost be considered an addendum to the review that I did of the Domino XL. This is new tenant stock that's now available because of the XL, but has a benefit also to 500 users. Now what this is, is it's cut your own stock. So like this is a 12 millimeter stock. So basically it's just a big huge box full of 12 millimeter tenons that are 36 inches long. So you'd be able to use these and cut them into whatever dim dimensions that you need for your project. Because of all the plunge depths that are available on the 700, of course, there's more depths than you know the tenon sizes come in already made. So this makes it really nice that you could just cut your own to size for whichever project that you're doing. Now it turns out that all the assortments of dominoes for the 700 come in strictly beach. The SIPO is being done only in the cut your own stock. So here's a variety pack that I, I ordered that has all the SIPO tenons in it. So these would be used mostly for outdoor projects, places where you need you know, rot resistant wood if you're not really putting a heavy finish on it and such. And what's interesting about these is that they've color coded them. So each of the sticks has a colored mark on the end so that you can distinguish the different sizes. So it'd be kind of nice that if you've got a little pigeonhole where you throw all these sticks in, you could throw a bunch of them in and pull out the size that you need without having to keep them all separated and such. So these are going to be really nice and useful. And I'd say that for the SIPO stock, even if you're a 500 user, it would be great if you got a stick of the 8mm and the 10mm and just kept them on hand. Unless you use a lot of SIPO tenons, it may not be worth buying a number of different bags for the different dimensions when you can just pick up you know, a bunch of sticks of this stuff. And I'm sure there's going to be some variety packs that are going to be available of this. And you'd easily be able to cut all the tenons that you need for that you know, once a blue moon outdoor project that you might be doing. So now while that 12 millimeter is not really appropriate for the 500 users, there is a box 
of 8mm tendon stock and also the 10mm. And both of these, of course, can be used with the 500. So this is also, this is the 8mm stock. Now with the 500, even I've used a number of projects where I was using kind of custom tenons, where I made my own tenons. They weren't wider. They're actually, I needed them narrow. But the, just the way that the structure was, I actually needed very long tenons. So I would set the plunge depth to 28 on, for both mortises, and in my case I had it, it was piercing a shelf that it was going through. So the shelf itself was 25 millimeters. So overall, I was needing, let me do all the math on that, about an 80 millimeter tenon. Now, these days, those are available off the shelf, but back then, they were not. So if I had had tenon stock like this, it would have just been fantastic for that project. Instead of making, I don't know, a couple dozen of those tenons and using them everywhere, I could have just been cutting them off of this stock. So consider that, even if you're a 500 user, that though this came out with the 700, it's certainly applicable, at least those two boxes and part of the SIPO assortment is certainly applicable to the 500 users. And you know a big old hard stick like this? There's got to be a prank that you can do with this. And one of the things that you can do to make your assembly a little bit quicker and also make it stronger is to simply pin it with a pin nailer. So we can take this domino that I just put in here for this joint. Dry with no glue. We're going to go ahead and pin this in place using a 23 gauge nail. Now the one I'm picking is a nail that's going to be able to go through the domino all the way to the other side. We want it pinned on both sides. And that thing is pretty closed, so even without the glue, without any clamping pressure, just hand pressure, I've got this thing nice and tight. And if I had glue in there, of course, it'd be a great way to cure it. And it's also good if you don't have a lot of clamps. Just kind of push this thing together, shoot the two nails, take the clamps apart, let it sit on the side, you're fine. Of course, don't put it on the show side. <laughs>